What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video I'll be going over the bearish case for Solidly and Solidex. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. None of this is financial advice. So uh, I will say that I'm not like bearish Solidly by any means, right? I think it's interesting um, and I'll go over, uh, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on it later. Um, but I just wanted to make, you know, the bearish case for Solidly, um, this type of video, because I feel like, you know, if you just look at social media, YouTube, Twitter, whatever, um, it feels like the public consensus for this project is bullish because Andre bribing and wars, right? Um, and whenever the public consensus is bullish, even though I would just, I, I would say like no, the, the majority of the public don't fully understand how Solidly actually works, um, and myself included, right? I, I don't even fully understand how this works um, because first of all, the communication uh, from the project, the documentation is pretty, uh, pretty confusing. Um, so you know, whenever everyone thinks something is bullish, you just have to be careful. You just have to be careful. And hopefully this video can, you know, give you some, I guess, opposing thoughts, right? Um, because I feel like everyone has been saying it, this thing is bullish. Um, and I don't particularly disagree, but you know, you have to understand both sides of the argument in order for you to come up with like the most educated, um, like for, for you to make like an educated decision, right? So yeah, so this is the, the agenda of the video. Let's get right into it. So, you know, what is Solidly? Um, it's a novel concept, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's it's an AMM on Phantom, right? Um, they're trying to go cross-chain. I think Avalanche is coming next, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon, right? So if you think about like valuing, uh, like doing a valuation model for um, uh, for Solidly, um, you have to come to an understanding that right now it's just an AMM on the Phantom ecosystem, right? Um, people, it, 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 it sounds like people are, like think it's going to flip like Uniswap or something. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, they're going to be like a cross-chain index that um, uh, introduces like this VE vibing model um, with like the 3-3 mechanics uh, to, prevent, to, to, prevent, to prevent you from uh, being diluted. So let's kind of go over to tokenomics, right? Um, so I think Solidly is interesting because the weekly emissions that come out of the protocol, it's inversely related to the amount of people that lock their solid, right? So, you know, zooming in here, right? If 0% of the token is locked, right, for VE, then the weekly emission would be 2 million, right? Assuming that, you know, two is 2 million tokens emitted per day, or sorry, per week. If 50% of the token is locked, then weekly emissions is a million, right? It's half. If 100% is locked, then it's zero, right? So it's inversely, uh, inversely uh, related. Everyone locks, no emissions. No one locks, then high emissions. So if you own the token, if you're farming a token, uh, you're essentially incentivized to either just sell it or just like lock it up for a long period of time. And these VE tokens are NFTs, right? Um, and so that also kind of improves on the CRV model uh, because whenever you lock up your CRV for VE CRV, um, you know, you can't. That's not transferable, right? It's just like it's just <laughs> it's just sitting on curve. Um, but with you know, solidly, Andre uh, figured out that okay, like that's a pretty bad model, right? Um, it kind of fixes the flaws of VE CRV, and through this NFT mechanism, it makes these VE, um, I guess, solid tokens uh, actually liquid, right? Um, which I think is important to keep in mind um, as we get into like the later parts of the video uh, when we discuss like Solidex and the OX DAO. Okay, and I believe yeah, so. Now, this is important, right? Um, this VE and 3-3 idea, uh, it actually prevents you from being diluted, right? So if, you know, if there's a hypothetically a 5% supply increase, uh, if you're actually, you know, VE your tokens, uh, then uh, your, your holdings also increase by 5%. So if you lock up your tokens, you won't get diluted. And this is kind of different from the Ohm model, right? Um, because with Ohm, with the Olympus DAO and the bonding mechanism, it actually dilutes you, right? If you 3-3 three, three and there was no bonding, then there's no dilution, right? I mean, there's like no new wealth being created, right? Because everyone in the ecosystem gains the same amount of tokens. Uh, so unless there's like new money coming in, you know, there's like no value being created, right? You just own more tokens. Um, but with, you know, with 3-3 three, three and Ohm, there's like this bonding thing where you can like buy Ohm at a discount, um, you know, as long as you like wait three or five days or whatever, um, you know, so there's like a lot of dilution that happens with Olympus DAO and its forks. But with VE33, because there's no bonding, there's actually no that dilution, right? So that, um, you know, so it improves on, I guess, the flaws of just 3.3 three itself and VE, right? And when it comes to CRV, because with VE CRV, like your tokens were not transferable, right? With, with the NFT thing, um, you can transfer your tokens. And, you know, Olympus DAO, right? Um, people that stick were heavily diluted um, with 3.3, with three, three, uh, sorry, with, with uh, VE 3.3 three, three, um, on Solidly, there's no dilution, right? As long as you lock up your tokens. Yes. Yeah, same, same thing here, right? Um, and, you know, yeah, it's NFTs. 
Um, and I think the screenshot like will be good. So like maybe your tokens like lower, higher. I, 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 I don't know, but you know you can uh, like trade your VE three three positions on on paint swap. Yeah, paint swap finance. Okay, so what is the end goal of Solidly, right? Because you know, there's a lot of hype, right? Everyone thinks it's like the best thing ever. Uh, maybe it is the best thing ever, but you know, we kind of have to think about like the fundamentals and like, what is it trying to achieve? Like, what is it trying to achieve? Um, so obviously I, I already talked about um, the flaws of VECRB and the flaws of the ohm, right? The bonding and the dilution aspect. Um, and there's like another flaw um, that Andre is trying to fix. And it kind of goes over, I guess, like the, um, X sushi model, the VCRB model, where if you just lock up your tokens, right? So for example, let's take sushi, for example, if you take sushi, right? And stake your sushi for X sushi, you just earn like the protocol fees, right? Um, it doesn't matter which token pairs um, earns fees, right? You just take your sushi, stake it, and you earn fees. Um, but with the VE33 thing, um, he kind of changes it up a little bit where, you know, it's still taking this, I guess, the sushi model where uh, fees earned by the protocol goes to uh, 33 lockers. But but the emission by the protocol should go to pools with the highest fees. Um, and the VE33 lockers decide which pools receive emissions. So essentially, TLDR, let's simplify this thing. Um, essentially, um, all the fees are going to go to lockers and the lockers decide where the emissions are going to go, right? So if you're locking the token, then it makes sense for you to give solid emissions to uh, the trading pairs with the highest amount of fees, right? And if you lock up your solid tokens and you vote for something that you know, receive no fees, then you're not really going to receive fees. So that's kind of uh, how you think about it. Yeah. And the, I guess the problem with like VCRV is that you can like bribe um, particular token pairs um, that might not get any fees whatsoever, but you know, that pool will still get emissions. But you know, he's trying to fix upon that issue. Um, and I think the bribing concept is interesting because I, I kind of think of this as like democratizing emissions, right? So if you think about like Spooky Swap, Trader Joe, um, essentially the team, right? The Trader Joe team, the Spooky Swap team essentially determines where emissions go, right? Uh, for, and maybe there's like some human element there, right? Maybe they make a mistake. Maybe some pairs that earn no fees get like high rewards and, you know, it kind of messes with like the tokenomic model of Boo or Joe. Um, but with Solidly, because token holders are incentivized to give emissions uh, to trading pairs that earn the highest fees, maybe that's going to create for better tokenomic structures and incentive structures. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, this is all an experiment, right? Um, so maybe this thing fails, maybe it doesn't. Um, but that's kind of what, you know, Andre is going for. And this kind of goes along with the ethos of crypto, right? Uh, where there's a lot of forking going on. You kind of look at, oh, I mean, let's kind of take a look at like, you know, um, like tokenomic structures, right? It's just like with Olympus DAO, right? Ohm did something cool and then like a bunch of forks came up and then, you know, some went to zero. I, I, I guess most went to zero and then there are like still some that survived, right? Um, and then with SushiSwap, right? Sushi forked Uni, uh, introduced a token, forced Uniswap to introduce a token. And then there are a bunch of these other protocols that look at Sushi's successes, look at Sushi's failures and improves upon those tokenomics, right? So open source software, lots of forking, lots of innovation, lots of I guess improvements, right? Incremental improvements that happen over time. And maybe this is the final model that makes sense. Maybe it's not, it's an experiment. We'll see, right? Let's just watch, uh, you know, let's grab a bag of popcorn, eat from the sidelines as, as, as some DGNs uh, look to farm, uh, farm, farm these emissions. Yeah, so I, I think I already mentioned this. Um, and also, um, uh, so you, you can kind of see like, you know, Andre looked at the flaws of past tokenomic structures and he's trying to improve upon them. And also, um, you know, you're sorry, uh, Andre, like, uh, created urine, right? Uh, urine dot finance. Um, and one of the issues, uh, that, you know, he, I guess has regrets, um, like with like how urine operates is that I guess like yield aggregators, like urine dot finance, it offers pretty good yields for, you know, like stakers, right? But how it earns yield, um, for, uh, depositors is by uh, essentially urine taking, let's say Bitcoin, for example moving it around, right, within the ecosystem and farming and dumping the tokens. So if you look at the wrapped Bitcoin vault, uh, the APY is super low right now, but it, it used to be like 10-15%. Um, but what it essentially does is it, it supplies and borrows Bitcoin on screen. So it loops, right? Supply Bitcoin, borrow Bitcoin, supply Bitcoin, borrow Bitcoin, right? And it just farms and dumps the token, uh, the Scream token, right? And this is one of the reasons like, you know, Scream hasn't done that well uh, prior to like the whole solidly thing. Um, and it's kind of parasitic to the ecosystem, right? Because Urine is saying, hey, deposit your assets here and we'll farm and dump things for you, right? Um, from a user perspective, that's fine, right? Because if you're bullish on Bitcoin, maybe you want more Bitcoin, um, but from like a DeFi, like, you know, ecosystem, like community perspective, maybe it's not that great. So 
how Solidity is going to distribute emissions is by not farming and dumping the token, but it'll just literally give you the token, right? So if you vote for the Scream FTM pair, right? Then like whenever you earn fees, it, you're going to receive Scream and FTM, right? Uh, so obviously like anyone can just like dump Scream, right? If they wanted to, but hopefully, you know, maybe it'll reduce the salt pressure and maybe it's going to create a more fair, like more ethical ecosystem, I guess, right? So, you know, that's the idea. It sounds all grand and dandy, right? Uh, at, at least the concept. Uh, so, no, but like, what, what edge do they have actually on the competition, right? And how does value accrue to the token? So, just an AMM, right? Um, it's going to allow for variable swaps and stable swaps, right? So, it's going gonna, it's gonna to compete with the Curve, it's going to compete with Spooky Swap, and, you know, just any AMM in the ecosystem. Uh, there's a 0.01% fee, right? So, it's a very low fee. Um, and, yeah, just think of them as like Curve and Uni V2, right? So like, like, bundled together. Um, the one problem I have with Solidly is that um, the user experience and the UI is like pretty confusing, right? And Andre often mentions like test and prod, right? Because everything he does is an experiment, right? Like his goal is not to pump your bags. His goal is to innovate, experiment, and see if it's, it, it succeeds, right? Like he, 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 he doesn't care if you make money on this protocol. He's just trying to experiment and seeing if it works. And because it is a, because it is an experiment, there's like a, a lot of bugs. Um, so I tweeted this, um, I forgot, maybe... I, I think I did this last week, right? But you know, someone in the community um, essentially tried to swap 24,000 USDC to FTM, right? Which should be a liquid pair, right? I mean, USDC to Phantom, obviously. But when he did it, uh, maybe he didn't read um, the UI uh, by properly or something, but he turned $24,000 into $600 at FTM, right? And uh, I had to say, hey, guys, like, hey, like when you're using Solidly, you have to be careful, right? Because the UI, the UX, it's, it's not that great. Uh, it's not that clear, right? The, it doesn't give you a warning, right? If your swap is going to result in like a 90% loss of funds. Uh, so maybe don't swap on solidly just yet. And, you know, just really be really careful, right? Um, and then, you know, I was kind of thinking about it. Like, did I just have to warn people to not use an AMM because they can incur like 95% slippage or something? And that definitely doesn't feel right for me, right? Um, and, you know, because if solidly is supposed to be like the best AMM ever and, you know, a like a guy like me has to warn people to like not use solidly, then like, is it, it like, is the product ready, right? Is the product even ready, right? Sure, it has a lot of bunch of TVL because a bunch of DGENs wants to farm this thing, but is the product ready, right? Maybe the, um, the price is like, um, too ahead of like the fundamentals, right? Maybe it's still like a, a test, testing phase. Um, and if you go to the GitHub repository, um, and, uh, you look at issues, you know, everyone's like, Hey guys, like I lost like 99% of my funds because I swapped incorrectly. And maybe this is like the fault of the users, right? Like maybe they should have read, or maybe should, they should have been more careful. However, you know, I, I think it is an issue, right? I, I, I do think it's an issue, you know? Um, and like I said, like Andre like, tests and prod, right? I mean, everything he does is an experiment. He doesn't care if you're, if, if these tokens go up. Um, so, you know, solidly is bound to have hiccups. You have to be careful. When I provided liquidity, um, I incurred some slippage, right? Um, I did like USDC MIM and like I lost some money. I'm like, like what the hell is going on? Um, lots of user experience issues, lots of UI issues, but you know, let's assume that, you know, it gets fixed later and like, let's live in a utopian society where, you know, like solidly is back up and running, right? And let's, let's keep going into the, the Andre article. So he, he often talks about um, the AMM arena is quite saturated and they didn't want to launch an AMM to compete with the existing projects, right? So, you know, we're not going to compete with existing AMMs, like our, the current AMMs can build on top of it, yada, yada, yada. But if, if you think about it, like if Solidly is locking up like way more TVL, like where's that TVL coming from? Sure, some of that TVL is coming from Ethereum, Avalanche, right, and the other chains, but if Solidly is trying to be the number one decentralized exchange on Phantom, then obviously that's not good for the fundamentals of these other tokens. So if Solidly is a success, then it's probably bearish the fundamentals of Boost, Spirit, and Beats, right? And maybe even Curve. I mean, Curve, like, Curve doesn't really care what happens on Phantom, to be honest, uh, because they're mainly on Ethereum. Um, but for the fundamentals of these tokens, I don't think it's a good thing, right? The price of these tokens might go up because you need to buy Boo, Spirit, Beats to farm Solid. But, you know, once the emissions go down, there's going to be less incentive to hold on to these tokens if Solidly ends up being uh, the, num the number one exchange. Yeah. So, and, you know, uh, I think Andre also said, um, yeah, it's not trying to compete and, you know, protocols can build on top of it, right? But if you think about it, like, why would anyone... So if Solidly is the most liquid, like, why would anyone use Spooky Swap, right? Uh, when you can swap with, like, 0.01% fee, right? Uh, like, why would, you, why would I use Spooky Swap or Spirit Swap or Beats? Um, maybe it's like more capital efficient, but you know, 
it's probably going to be better for users to swap on solidly and maybe spooky swap can like you know route trades through like solidly right but at that like why would they do, like as a user like why would you like i, I think spooky charges like a 0.3 percent fee or 0.2 percent fee right so like would you rather you know pay a 0.21 percent fee to like trade on spooky swap or pay or pay a 0.01 percent fee to like trade like trade on solidly it, it doesn't really make any sense um so i think andre just said we're not trying to compete for the sake of you know being friendly um but you know at the end of the day it's it's it, like they're going to compete right they're going to compete and it's probably bearish the fundamentals of these tokens okay let's keep moving forward let's call let's talk about the, uh, the like, i guess the convex clones like solid x ox style um yeah let's, let's kind of go over it um and the cool thing about solid is that you know because of the anti-dilution aspect right feel free to pause this um if you want to read through it but uh essentially um if you farm solid or you, you buy solid and you lock it up, you're not going to get diluted, right? So um, Kamikaze here said that, um, or the, the thesis is that, you know, um, like solid early on is more valuable than solid solid later on, right? Because you're not being diluted. And I, th I thought that was an interesting concept, right? Um, so it's kind of, you can kind of think of this as like the time value of solid, right? There's often like a time value of money, right? $100 now is worth more than $100 like next year, right? Etc. So maybe there's like this concept of solid now is worth more than solid later. So maybe, you know, people are um, not like pricing this in and maybe solid is undervalued, right? Who knows, right? Maybe maybe that's something to keep in mind. And also with the concept of time value of solid, um, you know, there's two, I guess there's two main competitors, right? There's like SolidX and there's OXDAO. Um, I don't know what happened with OXDAO, right? But they had to do the, uh, de delay their launch for like three days or something. Um, you know, like what the hell is up with OXD today? Like literally nothing, right? Literally nothing. Um, and, you know, SolidX, they had like a, you know, a few days advantage, right? Um, uh, they had a head start. And if you think about it, right, SolidX is uh, earning like 15% performance fee on all solid, solid earned, right? So, you know, if you think about the time value of solid, maybe SolidX is at a huge uh, advantage over OX style just because they launched early and because early, uh, solid early on is more is worth more than solid later on uh, maybe they're uh, they, they've uh, they've accumulated they've accumulated enough solid already to just be the winner um, in the solidly wars right like we, we don't even know if there's gonna be a solidly wars right I mean, that's just like a narrative that the community is pushing but you know it's something to keep in mind um yeah, it, it just seem they seem to be the front runners. If there is going to be a solidly wars, um, I'm not really convinced there is going to be one, right? Um, um, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, so for me, I'm just stable farming, right? right? Uh, I, I think it's too dangerous to like farm uh, the sex token and like, these other tokens because they're super inflationary. Uh, the fundamentals are questionable. Um, so you know, I, I mean, I just kind of did. Um, I, I kind of I'm like farming this just so I, I can experience it for myself. Um, you know, I'm just gonna grab popcorn, watch from the sidelines as a bunch of DGens like buy these tokens. Um, and this is a very thought-provoking post by Disco DeFi, right? So I have no idea who this guy is, but you know, he's very very smart, right? Hands off to him. Um, and I kind of already alluded to this, right? But the reason Convex is so valuable is because of the flaws of the VE CRV model, right? Because if you lock up your CRV, you can't do anything with it. So it makes no sense for an individual to lock up your CRV on curve. It makes sense to just use Convex because, you know, at least with CVX CRV, you know, you, you can kind of transfer and whatnot. Um, right. So the Convex actually has product market fit, right? There's demand for Convex as services. However, you know, let's focus on this part here. VE solid, right? It's transferable. It's, it's, it's an NFT. Right, so is there actual demand for like co like a co convex clone like solid x or ox style right like if it's tradable then there's no reason for an individual to like lock up your solid tokens um for solid sex or something right like you can just lock it in solidly gain yield and sell it when you want to right so maybe the best play right now is solid and not like solid x right um you know the i mean this um this is true for all communities but you know, if you think about like the, like the bullish narratives that communities tend to spin up, you know, it's, you know, they, they just like make these narratives to make their bags more appealing, right? It's like, uh, solidly wars, buy my bags, right? And that's kind of how it works. And then, I mean, everyone does it, right? Um, it's kind of the crypto ethos. Um, but, you know, you kind of have to be careful about, um, you know, assuming that SolidX is going to be the best thing ever, assuming OXDAO is going to be the best thing ever, because maybe there's no demand for like a convex clone uh, for Solidly, because, you know, I mean, there's only demand for convex because of the flaws of the VCRV model. So if Andre fixes the flaws of the VCRV model, then do you need a convex? Maybe, right? Uh, there's no way to know. I mean, this thing has been 
live for like less than a week. I, you know, who knows, right? Um, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, but you know, like maybe the best thing you can do is like buy solid or something, right? Or farm solid and like not get too caught up in like the the entire like you know the the fundamentals of like the sex token or whatever. Okay, so um, you know the bear. I mean, I I, I guess I already kind of gave the bearish case, but um, or at least for solid X and the, the wrapper tokens. But you know, I, I think the easiest case for the bearish case um, is you know. I think the majority of people don't fully understand this thing, um, but everyone's bullish because it's Andre and bribing, right? And, and the wars, right? Oh, wars, buy my bags, right? Um, in that type of market, uh, or in that type of, I guess, I don't know, like, you know, I, as, as I, 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 I feel like I don't really have an edge, right? If I'm trying to be bullish, this thing, just because everyone's, everybody's already bullish, right? So who the hell is buying after me, right? That's kind of how I think about it. Uh, so. You know, I, I think farming this thing is fine, right? I think farming it with stables or like FTM USDC, stuff like that, right? Um, less volatile pairs, I think that's fine. But you know, if, like buying the farm tokens, right? I mean, they're all farm tokens. Like buying these farm tokens, I think it's pretty dangerous. Um, if you do the research, right? Um, maybe you don't, you've done more research, right? That's totally fine, right? I mean, it's, it's your money. You can do whatever the hell you want, right? I'm just like some Asian guy on the internet, um, but that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Um, and yeah, also like if you think about like the demand for um, the fees, right? Or demand for solid, it's coming from the fees, right? Because you can lock up your solid and earn fees. But it's a 0.01% fee, right? So you're not actually going to be earning that many fees um, from, because at the end of the day, solid, solidly is a DEX on the Phantom ecosystem, right? So if you think about like, you know, how many, how much people use Phantom, right? Um, there's like, I mean, I, I, I feel like a lot of people love Phantom, right? Because of like the DGN aspect, right? It's community driven. But if you think about like how much TVL is on Phantom, right? It's less than, you know, other chains. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's growing, right? It's growing, um, but it's not like, you know, Ethereum level, right? It's not like Ethereum level. Um, and, you know, once the hype dies down, like, you know, will liquidity be loyal, right? Who knows? Um, and even if like, you know, there's a bunch of activity, right? 0.01% per trade, like that's not that much money, right? If you think about it. So it's gonna need ridiculous amounts of volume in order for solid token to have like a high valuation in my opinion. And maybe it gets there, right? Um, but the point is, I think um, solidly success is kind of limited to Phantom's success. It's also limited like Phantom scalability, right? Um, Phantom, like Phantom is a pretty centralized chain, um, but it doesn't scale that well. Um, sure, like you can like bid gas up like for like 2,000, 3,000 GUI, um, but uh, from a user experience standpoint, like it's not that friendly, right? Like sometimes you have, you do a transaction, it's like a lock, or it's, it's pending and it, it doesn't go through. Um, I think the MetaMask integration isn't that great, um, no, which is fine, right? I mean, I think they're gonna expand it like Avalanche and stuff. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, it, it just like keeps growing. But I feel like the sentiment around Solidly is that it's gonna like replace Uniswap and it's gonna be like this number one DEX. It's gonna be the best thing ever. And I just like don't think that's gonna be the case. And if it, I mean, even if it's gonna be the case, it's gonna take like like a year to play out, right? So uh, maybe you don't have to be like that bullish like right now, right? Maybe you can play play like play like the long game, right? You don't have to be you know su like super bullish like immediately, right? Like buy now, like you, you don't have to do that, right? You really, you, you really don't. Um, and also the the bear case, right? This is an experiment, right? Andre doesn't really care if this fails or succeeds, right? I mean, obviously he wants this to, to succeed because you know he's putting his name behind it, and a lot of people have their money in it. But you know, he's testing in production, right? He's testing in production. Don't yolo your net worth on an experiment, right? Just don't do it. Um, yeah, and like I mentioned, right? Um, yeah, this is like a uh, copy and paste of like the slide I made earlier on. Um, but you know, when public consensus is bullish, like where is your edge, right? And you kind of have to be careful. And this is Andre. Definitely, right? He's not a social media guy. And I think when he partnered with Daniele um, to like launch this thing, I think his mindset, right? Before the whole Sifu thing was, okay, like I am Andre, I am a developer. I hate doing community relations. I hate doing marketing. I hate talking to people. Or maybe, okay, sorry, maybe he doesn't hate talking to people, but you know, he, he, does, he doesn't like the marketing aspect, right? So maybe I can just build solidly, right? Behind the scenes and then Daniele can just pump it for me, right? That's, maybe that was his thing. But because of like the whole Daniele thing, right? Then, you know, like I'm not gonna talk about that. You know, like now Andre is kind of like the face of this project, but you know, he's been taking a lot of heat uh, with like the whole UI, UX feed, uh, sorry, UI and UX bugs. Um, like, you know, like, like it's kind of confusing and whatnot, right? And you know, he's kind of, I mean, I'm I'm not taking any sides, right? But you know, he's kind of like you know lashing out against um, bite masons like in the reaper farm, right? Um, and he's like, you know, like they stole from the community. It it, 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 it feels like Andre is like kind of stressed, right? Um, and I totally get it, right? I mean, being a public figure, it sucks. 
especially when you know people expect you to make money for them, right? Um, I feel like everyone expects. Um, like, I feel like the, the the mindset when it comes to Solidly is like I'm gonna ape and hopefully make money, right? Um, it's not really trying to understand the technology. It's trying. It's not really trying to understand um, the roadmap and like you know like why the technology is interesting. It's more like the ape the, the ape mentality. Um, and I don't know what's going on. I'm not taking any sides. I just like wanted to share this, right? Um, because I do think it's interesting, right? Because Andre is the face of the project and he deleted his Twitter because you know he hates Twitter, I guess. Um, so maybe it's a good look, maybe it's a bad look. Maybe he's building uh, behind the scenes, but you know, this is an experiment. This is an experiment. Andre does experiments, okay? Like he doesn't care if, it, if this thing pumps, right? He literally does not care. Yeah, uh, and you know, um, uh, also a warning, right? There are a bunch of scammers out there, right? There's this new Twitter account called Andre Cronier123 and he's you know claiming to be like like Andre right and he has like 6000 followers but no this is a scam account right so do not fall for these scam accounts Andre does not have a, an alternate account he deleted his twitter he's probably going to uh, be quiet for some time now right because he needs a break right he needs a mental health break you know like we should totally relate with that right um and i think as crypto participants we kind of just expect the devs to like make people money but you know devs are human right just don't expect them to like pump our bags you know, like Andre, right? He's been building in DeFi for like two years or like, I mean, or in crypto for like a very long time. So, you know, like, you know, he needs a break, he needs a break. Uh, and Anton, right? He works closely with Andre. He says that's not his account, right? So this is a scam. This is a scam. Don't fall for it. Um, I think this thing is going to launch um, a new project or like some new smart contract and he's going to ask you for your money. Don't add, like, don't fall for it, right? Please. There's too many scams in crypto. Okay. What's, what's what, what, what about the bullish case, right? Because I spent too much time like uh, on, on the bearish case. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the bullish case, you can like go on YouTube. Um, there's like a bunch of different narratives. Um, but you know, the way I think about it is that, you know, I think, you know, solidly kind of improves upon, uh, the tokenomics of other successful protocols, right? Namely, Ohm, Curve, etc. And I like their design. I think I like their plans to go cross chain. And I think the bull case is that it's going to replace SushiSwap as a cross-chain index, right? Because SushiSwap, I mean, it's probably going to zero at this point. Um, I mean, not not zero, but you know, the, the token is going to just, it, it's, a, it's a perpetual form token. It's always going to have TVL. It's going to be a safe DEX to use. But in terms of like its fundamentals, right? And the tokenomic structure, it's not that great, right? Hopefully someone takes over and fixes uh, the tokenomics and whatnot, but you know, not that great. Um, I think the bull case for Solidly is that, you know, over time it expands, right? So it goes to... Um, it's on Phantom, it goes to Avalanche, it goes to Ethereum, it goes to like, I don't know, like other EVM chains, right? Um, and it becomes like a cross-chain DEX with, that locks up a lot of the TVL with a sustainable tokenomics model. And if it like, I don't know, accumulates like 10 billion TVL across many ecosystems, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of demand for solid, right? Because if you lock up solid, you're not, you're not, you're not going to get diluted. Um, and the, maybe those NFTs are going to be, uh, be, more, be more valuable, right? So bull case, a better sushi slot, right? A better sushi slot. But you know, this will probably play out over months, right? Like, um, uh, I don't know if I included it here. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I didn't include it here. But you know, Andre himself mentioned that, you know, uh, Avalanche is coming next for Solidly. Um, but you know, like that's not gonna happen next week. It's not. It's probably not gonna happen this month. Maybe Q2, Q3, like, who knows, right? Um, it kind of depends on like where Andre's has that uh, and his, you know, and he, he's often mentioned that like he hates building in DeFi because everyone's so toxic. Um, so. You know, uh, just be aware that, you know, at the end of the day, this is an AMM on the Phantom ecosystem, right? So don't expect this thing to like <laughs> you know, flip Uniswap or something, right? That's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, once they expand cross chain, maybe there's like more things to be excited for. But right now, you know, it's, it's a farm token. Um, at least, um, yeah, it, it's a farm token. Uh, it's got a lot to prove, right? It's got UI issues. You got, it's got UX issues, um, you know, solid X, OXL, like, is there demand for those protocols? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. Um, you kind of have to think about these things, right? Um, and that, you know, I, I, I think at the end of the day, um, if you're farming, I think it's totally fine, right? I, I think it's totally fine. Uh, but I just want people to be careful when you're just, like buying these things uh, because, you know, maybe everyone says it's bullish, right? But, you know, like, is it actually bullish? Not sure, not sure. So in conclusion, I like solidly. I think it can do well over a long period of time. Um, in the short term, I think there's too much euphoria. Um, and Solidex and OXL, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm questioning uh, the tokenomics structure and uh, if there's even product market fit. Um, 
but you know, I mean, in the Phantom ecosystem, there's like a bunch of tokens pumping, right? Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of alpha to be had, right? Um, if you're like pumping these tokens, um, I'm not doing this, right? But I think, you know, I think the majority of the alpha is like front running the pumps, right? Uh, for example, like let's let's say token X Y Z is about to have emissions, right? Uh, but it's currently zero percent, and then maybe uh, next week it starts to get like a thousand percent APR. Well, then there's going to be future demand for the token, right? So I think what a lot of people are doing is that it's front running the emissions, right? So um, people are buying the token, expecting other people to buy the token later to farm with, and then the early front runners, they're going to dump their token to those people, and they're going to flip uh, those tokens for profit. So I think that's what that, that that's kind of what's happening. Um, that, I think that's where the majority of the money is made, and also that's where the majority of the money is lost. So you know, if you're new to DeFi, I would be really careful um, with playing. A solidly in solid decks um if you're like trying to be like if you're trying to position aggressively just because i think there's a lot of like you know pvp aspects um of like people front running and dumping um and who knows right who knows uh because like i mentioned like i think this is like solidly is bearish for the fundamentals of like boo spirit and uh, you know those projects but you know those tokens are going to pump because people need to buy boo to like farm solidly right um, but if you think that the fundamentals are deteriorating over time, then you should expect the token to also deteriorate over time. Uh, it's just like short-term price movements. It doesn't really give you like the full picture of how strong the fundamentals are. Uh, so, you know, you have to be, you have to think more critically about, you know, like why are people buying and like, when are they going to dump and <laughs> when are they going to dump, right? Because I think most phantom tokens, they're not pumping because they have strong fundamentals, right? Um, they're just pumping because people needed to farm, right? Like nothing about the Phantom like, altcoins have improved fundamentally, but the pumpamentals have improved because you needed to farm, right? So lots of, you know, sharks uh, in, in, in the water, right? So just be careful. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like me, I'm just like, I have a bag of popcorn. I'm just like farming with stables, right? I'm just like eating, eating popcorn and We'll see, right? Maybe Solid dumps so hard where I just like have to buy, right? Maybe Solid X dumps so hard that I, just, I just have to buy. But, you know, I don't care if I miss out on this. You know, I think you have. I think um, the time frame for this project is like pretty long. Um, you know, so just be careful. Just be careful. So, thank you guys for watching. That's the end of the video. Um, let's go to the very top. Oh, sorry, I don't want to give. Yeah. So this is a bearish case. Um, doesn't mean I'm bearish, but just be careful, right? Um, just be careful um, because. Lots of lots of narratives being thrown out there, but uh, lots of uh, warning signs definitely to be had. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section. If you dislike this video, right, like feel free to dislike it. You know, unsubscribe, whatever. I, I really I really don't care. Um, and have fun farming out there.